Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant ember Crafty friends, it's Caroline and I am back today with a tutorial for a project that I am calling sort of a sampler project. So if you think about like an embroidery sampler or a needlepoint sampler or something like that, it is traditionally a project that is made to serve several purposes. Number one, it's a reference for different stitches. So you can sort of reference what those stitches are like and kind of how to do them. Number two, it's ultimately a practice or an exercise project. It's something for you to kind of help hone your skills. And number three, it's just really pretty, right? And it's something that you can use aesthetically. In today's project, we are going to be making this little sampler folio and it is specifically to learn and practice different types of pockets. I had a request from a viewer recently on kind of how, how do you make a accordion pocket. I had referenced something about an accordion pocket and they were new to paper crafting and they kind of wanted to know how to do that and I remembered I had this flash to when I first was really excited about paper crafting and wanted to make all these things. And I would hear people talk about a simple pocket or an accordion pocket or a, you know, gusseted pocket. And I didn't really know what they were talking about, but I wanted to do all of those things. So today's project is going to be sort of an all in one like that. Now, a couple things I'm going to change on the way I did it. This is my prototype here. And I do love it, but there's a couple things I want to change on it. But let's do a quick walkthrough, and then I'll kind of point out what we're going to do differently. Um, one of them is this, this closure. I don't want to tie on both sides. Plus, I can't believe I'm saying this. I think it's too much ribbon. <laughs> I never thought I would ever utter those words. I love ribbon, but um, I think it's too much ribbon. So I am going to change this one to a magnetic closure. We're gonna do a little bit of a cut apart on the front with a little magnetic closure and it's gonna open up this way, okay? And so, but how we've got it right now, it's just a little trifold folio. And on this side over here, we have a pocket that has, it's not gusseted, but it's a, a, a pocket with a fold on the edges, right? So there's a, there's a fold of the paper, so it makes it a little bit thicker over here. I'm gonna show several ways to do different tuck spots around here. This pocket here is what I would call just a simple pocket. It's simply glued down on three sides but still serves very well as a pocket over there. Again, another tuck spot here. This one here is technically a pocket but it's just glued on three sides and it's made so that um, it's really just the focal point of the ephemera but I've stuck a little tag in here so it's sort of doing double duty there. This one here is an accordion pocket. I've only got the one fold on it, but it is an accordion pocket. So as you can see, there's all sorts of room in there and it really does expand quite a bit. We've got a couple little, um, you know, cards, uh, different matting elements and things like that to sort of slip in there. But you can put all sorts of stuff in there. You could really stuff that thing full. And then on the back side, I was sort of playing around with accordion pockets in a different way. So and by the way, let me back up here. <laughs> I am using terms that I think are correct, but I'm still a relative newbie to paper crafting. I'm still discovering and exploring and learning right along with others. And I feel like this is a craft that I'm probably going to be doing that for the rest of my life. I'm just gonna be learning and growing and trying new things. 
if you hear me say something and you think, Caroline, that's not right, that's not the right term, please say something in the comments below because I am here to be educated. I am here to learn and grow alongside all of you. I recently had posted a question asking, is this ephemera or is this embellishments? Because I really wasn't sure and I don't know if the terms are supposed to be used interchangeably. I don't know if there is a differentiation between them. I know my, what I think of as the differentiating factor between them, but I didn't know if that was correct. And I really didn't get any comments on it. I mean, a sweet friend of mine commented on it, but she is a newbie just like me. So we were both like, we don't know. <laughs> um, but I do agree with her assessment. Anyway, I've digressed. But if you hear me, say something about these, please let us know. This is an exercise in all of us learning, and I'm hoping that this is a forum for us to share and learn and grow in that way. So where, where I was, back up. Here we go, backing up. <laughs> I would call this an accordion pocket, okay, because it has the accordion fold on the side. It expands out. I could have done several more accordion folds and made it even expand even further, but I would call this an accordion pocket singular, okay? What I did on the back is what I would call accordion pockets or an accordion file pocket, okay? And I don't know if that's correct, so please correct me if you have a different way to call it this way. But this one in the back expands even further. It comes all the way out, and I've just put some tags in here in each one of them, and they these hold a lot of stuff. They can really expand out far. And because I wanted this to be expandable and I wanted to be able to stuff as much stuff in there as I felt like, I wanted the closure system on this to be also expandable. So if you can see here, we've got a series of score marks that I folded on here to sort of create almost like a just a roll top here effect. And so it can be tied down very tight, but it can also continue to expand out. And this can still, like if this were expanded way out like this, it would still be able to be tied down and closed and it's not going to mess up the closure any. I do love using magnets, but the downside to using magnets is, is that if you know, once you start overstuffing things, <laughs> you run the risk of getting your magnet placement out of alignment and they just won't catch anymore like that. So um, I thought a tie closure on this would be really cute. And we were gonna do this little sort of expanded top here so that it has room to grow and move along there with it. My bow is not the best right now. <laughs> and I, you know, obviously played around with some of the grommets for the finish and things like that. So this is the back side of it, all right? And then this is gonna be the front side of it. So it's sort of like a folio with a little expandable accordion file or accordion pockets on the back here that come out. And I thought it was really cute. Um, it can just stand up like this. You could place it on a, a desk or a tabletop. I know you guys can't see it like that, but it could stand up like that if you want. But it really just is kind of a nice little way to practice the skills of making pockets and sort of building folios and all of those things that are going to help in your album construction. So I think I've taken up enough time trying to preface this whole video. It's time to go ahead and get started. For the construction of our folio, I am going to be using eight and a half by 11 sheets of artisan cardstock. This cardstock is exclusively available at countrycraftcreations.com. I will have a link in the description notes below. It is amazing cardstock. It really is everything that people say that it is. I really do love it. It's fantastic. And having it in the eight and a half by 11 size is great because it adds a lot of versatility to your projects and sometimes you just don't need the full 12 by 12. And in this case, we are going to build this folio based on measurements that are gonna be easily cut out of an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So if you don't have the artisan card stock, that's fine. Um, and if you wanna use 12 by 12, that's fine too, but just know that I have designed this with eight and a half by 11 sheets in mind. And as always, I will have a complete cutting guide available as a free PDF download over on my website. It will be located under the section titled Cutting Guides. So to begin, I usually just kind of give you the measurements and have already cut it, but in this case, I'm gonna show you how I'm cutting it from the eight and a half by 11 sheets so that you can see how I've tried to maximize the use of the paper. We're going to use six sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut two pieces that are eight and a half by six. 
So I'm gonna place this in my cutter on, and I'm gonna just slide it over to six inches. So I've got eight and a half tall, six inches wide, and just make that cut. Save your cutoffs here. And I'm gonna make the second cut on the second sheet here. So now that we have our two sheets that are eight and a half by six, and we're gonna need one sheet that is six inches by five inches, and I'm gonna cut it from one of my cutoffs over here because since I cut it at six, I'm gonna naturally have five by eight and a half left here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna turn it to the eight and a half inch side, I'm gonna cut it at six, so I will end up with one sheet that is six inches by five inches. From the other cutoff here that is five inches by eight and a half inches, we're gonna need one piece that's two and a half by six and one piece that's two and a half by seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my five inch wide piece here and I'm gonna cut it into two and a half inch strips by eight and a half inches. And from those two and a half inch strips, we're gonna cut one to six inches in length and we're gonna cut one to seven inches in length. And since my trimmer only goes to six inches on here, I'm simply gonna back this down. So I know this is eight and a half inches wide. I need it to be seven inches. So I'm gonna cut an inch and a half off of that. And that's gonna give me seven inches by two and a half inches. I hope that makes sense. So I now have a piece here that measures seven inches in length, okay? my cutoffs over here. And so to make that accordion file folder piece that, that folds out like that, I'm gonna need four pieces that measure five and a half by eight and a half inches. And that's just gonna be cut from two additional pieces of cardstock. Very simply, we're gonna cut it in half on the 11 inch side at five and a half, and that's gonna give us five and a half by eight and a half inches. I'm gonna need four of those. <laughs> And for the inserts that are gonna go inside of the accordion file pockets on the back of our folio, we need four pieces that measure five and a half by three and a half. And that's gonna be very simple again. We're gonna cut it in half on the 11 inch side at five and a half. And then just cut those down to three and a half each. And then from our cutoffs over here, you should have a piece that measures two and a half by five inches. And we're gonna cut that one down to two and a half by four inches. And that is going to be for this flap closure here. This one here measures two and a half by four inches, okay? And then from our remaining piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock and the few little bits of scraps that we have left over here, that's what we're going to use to make our other tags, our other uh, photo mat pieces, some backing for the ephemera that we put on there from this little tag here, uh, which is gonna be a different size for you depending on whatever cut apart and what collection you're using. And so there is an extra piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock along with these few scraps here that, um, that are left. And if you can see, here I'll just show you what I did. So this square here that measures uh, two and a half by two and a half, I ended up trimming that one down and I used that to back this little bit of ephemera that I made a tuck spot with. I used some of these narrower pieces to back ephemera over here. And so as you can tell, there's, you know, these are very much usable pieces, so don't toss those. But I feel pretty good about this project with, you know, even if I didn't use these, this is basically the only waste I'm gonna have. I am gonna cut into this other piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock, but um, that's just so I can make more of these tags and stuff. So I feel like it's pretty efficient having only used six sheets of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. So let's go ahead and get started on our scoring and kind of constructing our base. So for our base, they are it's going to be built out of the two sheets that are eight and a half by six inches. And you're gonna place them in your scoreboard on the eight and a half inch side. And they're both gonna be, be scored and folded identically. You're gonna score them at four and a half and five inches on the eight and a half inch side. And once we folded and burnished them, we are going to, you know, they were put in here like this. We scored it four and a half and five. We're gonna turn them so that this larger piece is gonna be sandwiched on top of each other here. And we're gonna glue those together just like that. When gluing folios or really anything together like this where you're placing one piece inside of another one and you've got fold marks on either side, you have to be mindful that you are not going into that fold mark. 
So I'm coming right up to the fold edge and I'm just gonna slightly, I mean like not even a hair off of there. Once I've got it in place where I think I want it to be, I'm gonna take the top piece and fold it all the way over so it's sort of encasing it, just to make sure that I've got freedom of movement and I do. And I'm sort of just making a visual note on kind of where that is laying in this fold mark, right? The other thing that you wanna do when you're doing this is you always wanna fold pieces over on each other and check the edges on the top and the bottom to make sure that you aren't going off on a tangent. See, if this weren't on here straight, you could tell when you fold this over, it's not gonna line up. And so it's really gonna help you to make sure that you get that lined up correctly to check these two edges that they are perfectly in alignment there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on the back of here and stick this down. My preferred adhesives are art glitter glue and reptile glue, and I honestly use these two interchangeably. I genuinely feel that they are nearly identical in their properties, and I really like the way they work. I know other people like different types of adhesive, and you do you. You use what works for you. You know, we, we all have a preference on tools and supplies, and that's just you know what we're what we're comfortable with and so use what you have but i wanted to point out that i do use these two interchangeably and honestly it just comes down to price which one can i get cheaper at the time when i need to buy glue and every single one of my bottles has some combination of art glitter glue and reptile glue filled into them um i think other than the actual like this reptile glue one I don't think I have any that are, you know, 100% reptile glue or 100% art glitter glue. And that's because I'm just grabbing whatever I can <laughs> to fill up bottles whenever I can and I do them interchangeably. I have recently started using this glue here, this Uhu stick glue. And I had never even heard of this before. I saw on a video, Kim Reynolds over at Kim Can't Stop Crafting used this on one of her videos for uh, Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween video. And she was talking about how much she likes it. And I mean, Kim is just, I mean, I just, I love her as a person, but she's also a really talented crafter. So, you know, she recommended it and I thought I need to get some of that. And boy, was she right. I do love this. It's great. This is really awesome when you don't want to have glue lines show through certain papers, like some of the metallic papers and things like that that might show a glue line underneath. This works really well, and I think it sticks every bit as well as some of the other liquid glues, which is surprising for me since it's a glue stick, but it really does work really well. So I do like that. I wanted to kind of point that out. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put my glue on here. When I am gluing paper down, no matter if it's a large area or a small area, my whole focus is to get a lot of coverage, not a lot of glue. And so I am, you know, it's showing up on here on the camera probably well, really well. It's probably showing up as if I'm putting a lot of glue down. I'm not, this is a very tiny thin bead of glue, but I am making sure that I'm trying to cover it as best as I can. However, <laughs> and I'm moving kind of fast right now. When dealing with a large surface area like this, whether it is art glitter glue or reptile glue, again, like I said, they have very similar properties, if not nearly identical. It dries really fast, so you don't have a whole lot of time to work with this. So I'm really just trying to make sure I've got even coverage as much as possible all around, and then I wanna go ahead and stick it down. Again, being mindful that I'm just coming up next to the edge of that fold line and not going into the fold line. I'm not pressing it down all the way yet. I'm trying to give myself a little wiggle room if I need to adjust it. Folding the sides over, double checking that it is straight. Off by just ever so slightly here. There we go. That's good. And now I'm gonna burnish it down really well. And one of the things that um, Tamara from Country Craft Creations says when she's talking about sort of spreading glue out is that you think about it as if you've ever done any wallpapering. That paste is on the back of the wallpaper, but you have to go over and really spread that out. And what you're doing is you're trying to spread the paste in the wallpaper situation or the glue in this application between the two layers of paper. And so even though I um, used sort of a small amount of glue and made sure I had good coverage, this is that extra little bit that makes sure that that coverage is really um, 
that it's really spread out as thinly as possible. And we've got that taken care of. It looks really great and I'm happy with it. So this is the base for our folio. The next piece that we cut was one that measured five inches by six inches. And this is what we're going to use to make the accordion pocket on the inside of our folio. So let's go ahead and score, fold, and burnish that one. We're gonna place it in on the six inch side and we're gonna score it at three eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch, seven eighths of an inch, five and one eighth of an inch, five and three eighths of an inch, and five and five eighths of an inch. And what that's gonna give us is it's gonna give us a three eighths of an inch piece to attach it down. And then we're gonna have these little uh, quarter inch gussets that are gonna be folded in an accordion style so that it's gonna give us a lot of room there for our pocket. Now, then we're gonna turn it to the right on the five inch side. And we're gonna score that at one half inch. Okay, and then we're just simply going to fold this in a series mountain, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain on our folds across the six inch side. And then this one on the bottom is just going to be folded like a mountain fold, just like we normally would. So we're going to go ahead and fold that down, burnish it really well. So we're going to fold these mountain, valley, mountain, and I want to really make sure that the mountain folds are stacked on top of each other. If you can see when I start to fold this, it's not falling directly on top of each other. It's pushed back some. So I really wanna make sure that that piece, that other mountain fold falls exactly on top of, the, that both mountain folds fall right on top of each other. So usually if I can get kind of one side going, I can sort of work it down the line. And I'm just pinching it into place there to make sure that those are really lined up and that my mountain folds are right on top of each other. Because sometimes in the process of folding the paper, it sort of goes astray and you just have to really be mindful of that when you're folding it. And so now I've got my mountain folds laying. Oh, there we go, hold on, I don't. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta coax that paper where you want it to go. So now I've got my mountain folds laying right on top of each other. I'm gonna fold the other side in the same way. And now that we have both of those sides folded so that we've got our little accordion folds on the sides here, we're gonna make a couple little cuts. So I want to be able to fold this bottom piece up over these accordion folds here. And so I need to make a little snippet cut I need to cut out this, this bottom corner here of these three rectangles. So I'm gonna cut just to the inside of the fold line or the score line here on the, on the bottom. And I'm gonna cut just to the inside of the score line here on the side so that I've cut out this little piece here. See? I'm gonna do that on the other side. And now I'm left with a piece that looks like this. And when I fold my little accordions up like this, then I can bring this bottom up just like that. And I've got kind of a nice, neat little package here of a pocket to attach down. Now I do like to put a little dab of glue on the back side of each of these um, accordion fold pieces here, right? And then fold this up. I'm gonna take a couple small clamps and I'm just gonna clamp that on there. You can use clothespin. Um, you don't have to do this, honestly. It's just, I like to do it this way. So let's just preface this. Like I have in other videos, everything I'm showing you is just how I do it. It's, is it right? Not necessarily. Is it wrong? Not necessarily. It's just the way I figured out how to do it. And I'm hoping that you're gonna either glean something about the way you like to do something, or maybe learn something from what I do and make it your own in a different application in watching how I do it. That's all. So, all right, so I'm gonna set that aside here for a second. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we've got these two pieces here. One of them measured two and a half by six and one of them measures two and a half by seven. On the two and a half by seven inch piece, we're gonna place it in our scoreboard and we're gonna score it a half an inch on either side on the seven inch side. So I'm gonna score it at a half an inch and I'm gonna score it at six and a half inches. 
and then I'm gonna turn it to the two and a half inch side and I'm gonna score it at a half an inch on two and a half inches. Or in my case, I'm scoring it at two because it's hard for me to get in this little half inch spot. So I'm still scoring it at a half an inch. I'm just backing it down on that, if that makes sense. Let's go ahead and fold and burnish our score marks. And once we have folded and burnished our score marks, I like to miter my corners. Now I've seen a lot of people, they come in with their scissors and they just cut straight through that X there where those two fold marks meet, they just cut straight through there. And that works totally fine. I just like to fold one side back and start from the fold and clip out, open it back up, and then do the same thing, start from the fold and clip out. The reason being is that then I'm sure that I always have a perfectly straight and you know perfectly true squared corner there like that. Sometimes when I've cut through that X, I'm, I cut into it a little bit or it's a little bit long or something like that. And I just know that when I do it this way, it always works out straight and smooth. So that's how I like to do it. So I'm gonna show you that one more time. We've got it opened up, we've got a score mark here and we've got a score mark here. It doesn't matter which side you do first, but you're gonna fold one side back and then you're gonna place the scissors right in the notch of that score mark where those two score marks meet and clip it. You're clipping through two pieces of paper at the same time doing that. Open it back up, fold the other side back, place my scissors into that same little notch point and clip it again. Now I'm only clipping one piece of paper this time. And then that way when I close it up, you know, I fold it up, I've got a piece that's perfectly straight and true on my corners. They're never wonky, they're always where I want them to be. So that's why I like to do it that way. I'm also going to come in here and this is completely optional, you don't have to do this, but I want to just give a slight little miter back here on this flap that folds around. It's gonna keep it from sticking up. It's just, I don't know, I just feel like it's a nice smooth finish. Um, we are gonna put pattern paper behind this, so it's probably not gonna matter, but I just, I like to do that and it just gives me a nice perfect finish on my pockets. So this is for a pocket where you glue these folds that are that are wrapped around. That's what you use to attach down. And it gives it a little bit of a room, you know, a little bit more room in placing things in here by doing it that way, okay? at least. When you have a pocket like this, the benefit is that you're able to put something in from edge to edge of the pocket. You're able to go all the way to the edge when you're inserting something into that pocket. You have the full width of the opening to be able to put things into. Now, the other piece that measures two and a half by six on this one, we're gonna just do a very simple pocket and we're gonna glue it down directly on the paper on three sides. The benefits of this one are it's easy. <laughs> it's really easy. You can use pockets like this in places where you don't have a lot of space. So in this case, where I'm gonna have this fold over like this and open from, from, the, from the right opening to like this, I don't wanna put a pocket that has a whole lot of space on here because I want this to be able to fold flat like that, okay? I don't want something that's gonna hold it up. So in this case, having a pocket like that is gonna work out really well because I don't have a lot of extra bulk there. It's still gonna give me somewhere to tuck some things. I'm still gonna have some room in there, but it's not gonna interfere with a whole lot that I've got going on around it, right? And so the downside of is that you can't put something from edge to edge because you know by definition, you have to have some room here on either side to apply the glue to which it's gonna stick down. So you're not gonna be able to put things the full six inch you know, width across here. You're not gonna be able to slip something in that is that wide like you will be able to do on the corresponding pocket over here. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so I've got my three pockets created here for the inside of my folio. We've got the accordion pocket that's gonna go in the center. We've got the kind of folded edge pocket here that's gonna go on the side over here. And then we've got a simple pocket that's gonna go over here. One of the things I like to do on my pockets is I do like to cut a notch out of them. Number one, it lets people know it's a pocket. <laughs> For whatever reason, having that little notch, people then know, oh, that's where you're supposed to put things in. It's not just paper piecing or color blocking of some sort of a design element. It has a functionality to it. And number two, it does it really does make it easier to put things in and out of those pockets when you've got that slight notch there. A lot of people, and I've done this in the past, will use a circle punch 
and it's very simple to do that. You would simply take a circle punch and you know place mark where your center is put it in maybe halfway down go ahead and punch that and then you can cut that little sort of half circle notch out of there and it works great i have found that i prefer a notch and it just seems easier for me to line them up when i'm doing the matting pieces on there i have a hard time getting the circle the same depth every time i'm eyeballing it there's just not a lot of consistency when I'm using the circle punch, but if I cut a notch out of it, I have the same notch every time, no matter what, and I can always create a slightly smaller, uh, you know, matting piece on there and still have that notch line up perfectly no matter what. I also, and I, and I use my um, mini envelope punch board to do this. Sometimes I do use my regular size We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. It cuts out a larger notch. For this one, I am gonna use the mini and the other reason that I like doing it is there is a measurement over here. So it's really easy to always get it lined up in the center and I don't have to worry about that. So for this one here that's six inches long, I know if I come over here to that three inch mark and I punch it, then I've got a notch in the center there. Now, sometimes I'm off by just ever so slightly, right? So I have found instead of just putting it in one time and punching it the three inches, I'm gonna flip it over and go to the three inches and punch it again. It didn't really punch anything else out of that one, but sometimes it does. Sometimes it'll go over ever so slightly. I'm gonna do the same thing when I cut my matting piece. And it just, I don't know, it helps me to make sure that I've got things lined up just the way I want them to be lined up. So let's do that again for this one here that's the, the folded attached pocket here. And I'm gonna take it in and I'm gonna take the fold side over to that three inch mark and give it a punch. I'm gonna flip it over and take the opposite fold side over to that three inch mark and give it another punch. And there I felt it cut a little bit extra on that one. So as you can see, this one's just slightly wider there. And I think that that really, it just helps to make sure it's very centered. This one here is a finish size of it's just slightly under four and a quarter inches wide. And that's, I like to measure these because even though it's supposed to be four and a quarter inches wide, sometimes in the folding process, you'll get something off by a little bit, or maybe I cut my paper just a little short, who knows? But this is gonna be a perfect example of that. So I'm gonna put it in here, four and a quarter, half of four and a quarter inches is gonna be two and an eighth. So I'm gonna bring it over to the two and eighth inch mark. I'm gonna give it a punch. I'm gonna flip it over, take the other side over, to a two and an eighth inch mark, give it a punch, and there we go. And now we've got a nice perfectly centered um, little punch here in the middle of our accordion pocket that's gonna go in the center here. Now I wanna go ahead and attach these into my folio here, but with the exception of this pocket here that has the flaps that fold on the sides, these two, I need to have my pattern paper down first before I'm gonna glue them down in place, okay? So I need to go ahead and cut my interior pattern paper pieces to fit along the inside of my folio. Hey, it's Caroline and I'm in the voiceover editing stage here to remind you that there's something else you wanna glue down before the pattern paper. I forget and you will see it in a little bit. I'm gonna make a mistake here. So just watch out for that. The paper in the collection that I'm using for this folio and for this project comes from Cartabella. It is their new Welcome Fall collection. And this was the paper that I received in my Club EP kit for this month. And that's a subscription kit that I um, signed up for through the Echo Park website. I'll have a link for that in the description notes below. And it's a great subscription kit. I really like it. In the kit, I received the regular 6x6 paper pad, the 12x12 collection, some chipboard, some enamel dots, and some other, you know, little bits and, and pieces that go with the collection. I also purchased an add-on of the 6x6 mega pad, and I love using these. I know I've said this in the past, but one of the reasons I love using these is because I like using my scraps to make cards, and these are great for making cards but also Echo Park and Cartabella have started putting extra or different design papers in their six by six mega pads that you don't receive in the regular, um, the regular six by six pads. So what I mean by that is if you look at this, there's some of their corresponding solids are also included in the mega pad. 
These sheets here of all of these sentiment cut aparts are included in the mega pad and they're not in the regular six by six pad. So I wanted to point that out to you. If you just wanted to buy one of these pads, you know, maybe keep that in mind. Having the mega pad is gonna give you a lot more flexibility. The six by six is great though, and it's a wonderful paper pad on its own, just the regular one. The mega pad has 48 sheets. The regular six by six has 24 sheets. Um, they're all double-sided paper and they're great. I mean, you can't go wrong with either one of them. The and for the inside and the outside of my folio, I am gonna be using some pieces from the 12 by 12 collection because this folio is perfectly sized that I'm gonna use an entire sheet of 12 inch wide paper all the way across here. Now, when you hold it up here, you say, Caroline, you're short by like a half an inch. Like <laughs> your finished size of my folio is 12 and a half inches. And this paper is only 12 inches wide. Well, we have to allow for some space between these gussets and it just happens to work out and also some space, you know, cause we're treating this as a matting. So we're not going edge to edge completely. And it just works out perfectly. I was tickled pink when I found that out. So I'm really happy about that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 12 by 12 sheets, or in this case, they're 12 by six, and I'm gonna trim them down to 12 inches wide by five and seven eighths inches tall. And I know some of you have probably seen me do this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk through it again anyway, because the purpose of this is to, to learn, right? <laughs> We're going through and kind of re, just practicing skills, right? So what I do is I then lay it inside of my folio and I'm looking for an even reveal around, I'm starting on the left-hand side, so I'm looking for an even reveal around these three portions here on the left-hand side. It feels like I'm a little too far towards the top, so we'll slide it down some. And then I'm gonna come over here where I can see where that first fold mark is, and I'm gonna make a little tick mark just to the left of that fold mark, okay? And that's gonna be where my first cut is going to be for this panel. I don't measure, I lay it down and I mark and then I measure. And what I mean by that is that I'm gonna take my mark over here to my cutting, um, to my paper trimmer and I can see that that mark is at three and three eighths of an inch, which makes perfect sense because those panels are each three and a half inches wide. So I'm backing it off an eighth of an inch um, in the width and the height. So. Now I know for these two outer panels, I need pieces that measure three and three eighths inches wide by five and seven eighths inches tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that first cut and that piece is gonna go right here, okay? And I'm laying them out in the order as I go. Now I could lay this other piece down in here and make the same little tick mark and make my cut, but I know that these gussets here are a half an inch. So I know that if I'm, if I'm giving myself a 1 8 inch smaller piece, you know, for my matting pieces, I need, I need the matting piece here to be 3 eighths of an inch wide in order to be 1 8 of an inch smaller than the half an inch that it is already. Okay, so the first thing I did then, let's recap here, I cut this piece here to 3 and 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so an eighth of an inch short of the half inch mark. I know this one over here also needs to be cut to three and three eighths of an inch as well. So I'm leaving this in the order that I want it to be. I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna cut from this side, I'm gonna cut it to three and three eighths of an inch. And I'm doing all of this because I want the pattern to be consistent across there. It doesn't matter so much on the inside because this is such a small print, okay? but it is gonna matter on other ones and I feel like it's just a good way to practice, okay? So now I've got my middle piece here. I've got my two pieces over here that are three and three eighths of an inch wide, right? If they'll stay there. Now out of this piece here, I need to cut two pieces that are three eighths of an inch off of either end. Since I've trimmed this down, it's gonna be really easy for me to do that because I can place it in my trimmer. I can see that I am at five and a quarter inches wide right now. I'm gonna go one, two, three eighths of an inch over here. Okay, and I'm gonna cut that. That's gonna be my piece that slits right in there. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go one, two, three eighths of an inch over here. Cut that. That's gonna be my piece for over here. 
And now I'm left with my centerpiece here and all of my patterns match up and everything just fits perfectly. Like I don't have to trim anything else off of that. Isn't that cool? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ink all of my edges. And once I've inked all my edges, I am going to glue down this piece, the two gusset pieces, and the center piece. I'm going to glue down all of my matting pieces except for this piece over here. This is going to be the one where we have the pocket with the, the flaps that are attaching back here. And I want to make sure that this piece gets slipped inside of this pocket once it's glued down. Okay, so we're gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down these four pieces right here. This is where I should have glued down that back flap on that center section here before gluing down that center piece of pattern paper. And once I have those three pieces of matting put down, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna set this aside. I'm, let's move on to our pockets, placing our pockets down. Now on the left-hand side, like I said, we're just gonna do a simple pocket here. We've already cut our notch out. I wanna make sure that I'm exactly the same top and bottom, and I am. If I need to trim anything down here to make it fit, this is when I wanna do it, all right? So once I've got that kind of positioned where I want it to be, I'm gonna go ahead and place some glue on the back and I'm only gonna place it on three sides. So I've got my notch here. I'm not gonna put any glue on the side with the notch. I'm gonna put it on both of the short ends and it's not a lot of glue, but it is maybe a slightly wider band of glue than what I usually put down, okay? So I'm gonna put it on both of these short ends up to an eighth of an inch wide is what I would say. And then again, along this bottom, six inch piece here or six inch side the side that's opposite the notch you cut out whether you used a circle punch or the little notch thing like I did it doesn't really matter but you want the side that's opposite that and then I'm just lining it up with this edge and laying it down I'm not really pressing very hard at first I'm sort of letting that glue kind of um, I don't know soften the fibers there I don't want it to wiggle around too much when I start pressing it down. Um, so I'm kind of letting it catch slightly. And then once I feel like it's sort of caught in its position there, then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna kind of aggressively burnish. And you're gonna see glue seep out when I do this and that is gonna be just fine. That's telling me that I've got glue all the way to the edge, which is what I really want. I'm gonna come along here. Goodness, I always get glue on my fingers and then I end up making a mess but the good thing is is it cleans up easily especially on the artisan cardstock it comes up like a dream and I'm just kind of going along here there's a little bit of a ridge along where the pattern paper didn't go all the way to the edge of the paper and I'm really just making sure that that is completely connected um, I'm almost creasing it along that ridge line a little bit there Okay, and again, it looks messy right now. It looks like the glue is, you know, really messy right now. Don't touch it yet because those fibers are softened. If you try to clean it up right now, you're just gonna end up ripping your paper. I'm gonna let this sit and when we get closer towards the end, I'm gonna take one of those rubber erasers like this and I'm gonna rub on there and I'm gonna lift that glue right off. I can, this isn't too wet, so I think I can do this one right here. So you can see that little spot there that was slightly darker in color where I had the glue. I don't wanna rub it too much. It just lifts it right off. So that will work. We're gonna clean that up. Don't worry about it. So now we're gonna go ahead and attach down our little accordion pocket as well. And I've just positioned this where it, one where it's centered right to left. So I'm, I'm centered in this middle panel here, left to right. And I'm going almost all the way down to the bottom of the, of the folio. I'm going down to the edge of the pattern paper. So I'm about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom of the folio when I glue that down. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place glue on the back side of all of these folds that we folded around to the back. So the back side of this bottom fold that, that kind of folded up, this flap here that folded up, and then these flaps here that are our attachment flaps that are next to that series of accordion folds. We're not getting glue in the accordion folds, we're just on this bottom part here where it's gonna attach. 
And once we've got that on and I feel like it's nicely distributed, we're gonna go ahead and position it. Again, like I said, centered left to right. And I'm kind of coming just right down to that uh, bottom of the pattern paper for our, de our decorative paper that we put down here. So it's about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom. I'm just sort of holding it in place, not really pressing too hard yet. Try to get it to sort of stick, cleaning up any that might seep out around the edges. And I'm kind of going inside of here now. You can see I'm taking my bone folder and I'm going to press down inside of here on that little ledge where the glue was. Cleaning it up as I go because I'm making a mess. <laughs> and because we have a lot of paper here on these edges here, like on that little fold there, I am going to take a couple clamps and I'm just going to place them right there along that bottom just until that glue can set. And now for this pocket piece here, I have in the past placed the paper in and then glued it around the back side before attaching it to the, um, the side here or to wherever I'm trying to put it in an album or wherever I wanna put it. And I would do that right now, but I, I would just wanna point out, it's kind of hard to do. And unless you've done it a lot, it's real easy to get it off ever so slightly. And then once it's off, it's stuck down there and you're just dealing with crooked paper in a crooked pocket on a crooked page. And it's just a lot of crooked. I feel comfortable doing it now, so I continue to do it that way. But I think for the purposes of this video, since it's sort of a practice, you know, a pra this is all about practicing making pockets and stuff like that. Let's let's make this a little bit more simple. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two short sides. I'm going to fold them in whatever sides are coming from the top to the bottom. OK, I'm going to put a tiny little dollop of glue right there at the bottom of that miter cut. Bend my bottom piece up over that and just give it a nice firm burnishing. I'm just tacking it down in those corners so that I've got it attached there, okay? And now I'm going to, the first thing I wanna do is you always wanna dry fit. These are probably good, I'll take these off. So I'm gonna set it on this, this piece over here and I'm just dry fitting it to make sure that it's gonna fit, to make sure that I'm not too long or too short or anything like that. And it looks really good. I'm, I'm right where I want it to be. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down and then we're gonna slip this paper inside of it. That way we'll have some room to sort of adjust it, make sure it's in there straight. And um, it's just a little sim more simple way of doing it. Well, I don't know if it's, if it's simpler, I think it's, I think it's faster for me to glue them around the paper now, but that's only because I've practiced enough to where I feel confident doing that. And I feel like that um, this is kind of one of those a stitch in time moments. Let's take the time and put it down this way so that we don't have to rip it off and redo it, which ask me how I know, <laughs> I've done it a lot. But you know, I don't think those are necessarily bad Thing. So I'm having a hard time explaining this to you. And I think the reason being is that I really do believe that making mistakes is the best way to learn. The only reason that I am as good as I am, if I'm even at good at all, good at all, which I don't know that I am, but the only reason I have any inkling of any skill at all in this is because I was somewhat fearless and willing to make mistakes. And, be, and as a result, I have had to rip projects apart more times than I can count. And in the process of ripping them apart and redoing them, I learned a lot. And so I don't want to devalue that, but you know, it is frustrating. <laughs> Not everybody is as wackadoo as me and, and thinks, yay, a mistake. <laughs> I've learned something, you know, and, and even I have moments where I am not celebrating that mistake. I am spouting out expletives, right? <laughs> But, um, you know, so I, I just want to kind of preface it with saying that it's not necessarily a bad thing if you make mistakes. And then because that is that folded paper, again, I want to go ahead and put some clamps on here. I want to really make sure that these edges are adhered very tightly and it's going to give you very neat, tight, clean lines. And now that our glue has set, we can go ahead and take the clamps off. 
and I just like to give it another little burnishing in case the clamps left any indentations on there and it looks pretty good. And then we're gonna take our pattern paper, pattern paper, pattern paper piece, and I'm just making sure that this is the side that where the, the pattern lines up. Again, this print, it's not as prominent, but I wanted to show you how this is done in case you have a print that is more prominent that you know you really do wanna see that scene continue and it sort of helps in that way. And then I'm gonna slip it in to the pocket, just sliding it right in there. And sometimes it'll get stuck on that little piece there. If it does, you just simply take like a bone folder or something and you go underneath there and so that it creates almost like a sled for it to slide onto. This time it didn't, so it was just fine. But I wanted to show you that's how I address that if that happens. And now I'm gonna just line it up so that I've got an even reveal top bottom and this side here by this gusset and that's where I want it to be. Now, one of the things that I did in the past is I put glue over the whole thing, try to slide it in, it sticks faster than I want it to, I end up with a mess and I'm in tears, right? I, it's not necessary. You don't need to glue the paper down that's inside of the pocket portion. It's not going anywhere, it's gonna be fine. You really just need to glue down this paper here that's that's being seen. So once I get it where I want it, like as far as my positioning goes, I'll take a clamp and stick on that end so that I'm free to pick this end up and I'm gonna just slip some glue all back down the inside of this, okay? And it's not gonna go anywhere. That clamp's holding it in place. Come into the edge here, get some glue all along the edge of that paper. And once I've got it glued down, I'm gonna press it down. I'll go ahead and take this clamp off. Okay, and now I just take my bone folder and just press that into place. Make sure I've squeezed all that glue around. Boy, I just made a mess there, didn't I? <laughs> Good thing it erases off easily off of the artisan. I just, I like to use my fingernail or my fingers or my bone folder to just sort of scrape it up and get the chunks up and then I'll come back over with that um, that rubber eraser to sort of clean off any glue after the fact. Okay. And so now we've got the inside um, base covered with our paper and we've got our pockets attached and I think it's looking really cute. Now, let's go ahead and flip it over. We could go ahead and put our pattern paper on here, but I think let's finish with the construction portion of it. We're gonna flip it over and on this back center piece is where we're going to put that accordion file pockets, that sort of series of pockets that are gonna fold out in an accordion fashion, okay? And so let's work on the construction of that first. I'm gonna set this to the side. For the accordion file pockets, you're going to need the four pieces of paper that measured five and a half by eight and a half. And you're gonna score all four of them in the same way. You're gonna put them in on the eight and a half inch side and you're gonna score it at two and a quarter and six and a quarter. I just accidentally scored it at one and a quarter. It's gonna be fine, it won't matter, but <laughs> you're gonna score it at two and a quarter and six and a quarter. So you're basically scoring two and a quarter inches from either end and it's gonna leave you with a section in the middle that's four inches wide. Okay, so let's do that one more time since I messed up on that one. <laughs> put it in on the eight and a half inch side and we're gonna score it at two and a quarter and at six and a quarter. And that's it. We're gonna do that for all four pieces and I'll be right back. And then we're gonna fold and burnish all of our score marks, being careful to make sure that these tops and bottoms are lined up with the tops and bottoms of the pieces that you're folding it over onto. That's gonna ensure that your uh, fold lines are square and true every time. And once we've folded and burnished all of our score marks, we're gonna glue these together. So we're going to place some glue on this overlap piece here to glue it down there, but we're also gonna place some glue on the bottom. So we're gonna create a pocket, okay? And how I like to do that is I'm just gonna open it up. I'm gonna take some glue all along the bottom of the center section, just like that. And then I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna place it on the inside of one of the flaps, just along the edge. And I'm gonna come maybe like a quarter of an inch in, okay? And the outside of the other flap along the edge and coming about a quarter of an inch in. And then 
the one that's got the glue on the outside of the flap gets folded down first. The one that's got the glue on the inside of the flap gets folded down second. And the whole thing gets burnished down. And at this point, I'm sure it's not surprising to you that I've got glue seeping out everywhere. <laughs> I usually don't mind it, but I have gotten pretty heavy handed with my glue today. So it's kind of ridiculous, but it's fine. There we go. Make sure we've got this all glued down. And now what we've created is we've created just a really simple pocket opening here and we're glued down along the bottom and we've seamed this in the back, kind of like you would for a policy envelope, okay? And so I'm gonna do that with the other three and I'll be right back. Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow and the late summer sky is like a giant ember Everything is turning into gold And once we've got all four of our little envelopes, you know, folded and glued together, now we're going to go ahead and make some cuts in the top because I want to have some little notch outs there at the top. And at first I started using this two inch circle punch, but for the same reasons I, I mentioned before, I didn't, I, I don't wanna use the circle punch. It's hard for me to make sure that it's always lined up in the same place. So my circles are off slightly. I'm not lined up exactly the way I want it to be. And I was having some issues with it. So instead I'm actually going to use one of these circle dies. And I'm using this set here from Pink and Main. It's some stitch circles. I love this set. And I'm specifically using this one, not necessarily because of the stitching aspect of it, because you're not gonna see that. It's, it's, it's not gonna show up on there that this part we're gonna throw away, but because these are really sturdy dies. And I just, I think that they, um, they can handle what I'm about to do to them, which is I'm getting ready to run them through this die cutting machine and artisan cardstock is like 80 or 85 pound cardstock. It's really sturdy cardstock. And I'm gonna not be cutting through one layer or even two layers, but in some places here, I'm cutting through three layers because we have an overlap on this. And these dies really stand up to that. So I did some prep work on the die itself before I started using it. And I'm gonna show you what I did. This is like a two and a half inch circle that I'm cutting out of here. So I'm gonna lay this on my mat here and I'm just gonna kind of pick where I want my, cent you know, pick a center mark. It doesn't matter, it's the circle. You you're gonna pick a center, right? And I'm looking to make sure that if I come over an inch and up a half inch, there's the edge of the die. And if I come over inch and up a half inch, I'm a little off on this side here. So I need to kind of roll it ever so slightly to the right and I'm trying to get it to where these this die is going to intersect at the same place if I go over and up the same amount on either side there. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and once I have it in place where I want it to be, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna make a mark on the die across this line here that is three quarters of an inch from the edge of the die. Now that's not necessarily the cutting edge, but it doesn't really matter to me. I just want it to be equal distance, okay? So I've got a mark over here that's three quarters of an inch up from, from this bottom of the die, and a mark over here that's three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of the die. And I'm looking to see if these two points here, I'm gonna try to zoom in the camera here on the editing so that you can see it. I'm looking to see that this point here and this point here are similarly positioned on either side. And that's gonna tell me that I'm, I'm fairly close to straight. If I'm off by a little bit, it's okay. I'm gonna do it on one and then I'm gonna use that as a template for the other so they'll all be off in the same way so it will be fine. But that's how I'm doing this, okay? So now that I've got these three reference points on here, now the next thing for me to do is to place my little envelope here on my mat and find my center of my envelope, which is gonna be right here, okay? And I'm making a nice mark there on the center. I'm gonna get my die cutting machine, place my envelope on the, the plate here for my, my cutting plate. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to line up these two lines here along the top edge 
the two little marks that I made on the top edge and position the center mark with the center mark here on my envelope. And as I'm looking at it, I'm realizing that it would be easier if my center mark were down lower. So I'm gonna use my, um, my ruler so that I can actually make a mark three quarters of an inch down. I don't have enough room on my desk, you guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna find my center there, three quarters of an inch down, and I'm gonna make a another, I'm gonna make another center mark, center mark right there, um, just so that I kind of know where that position needs to be. Okay, so placing it on my, my die cutting machine, I'm going to line up these two side marks are gonna be positioned at the top of the paper, and the center mark is gonna be positioned in my center mark there, okay? And that's gonna give me a perfectly placed and, and, and the same reveal circle notch that's cut out every single time. Now to make sure that it doesn't move on me as I'm you know, placing it down onto the, the cutting plate and we're kind of going through the cutting process itself, I'm gonna take a little piece of repositionable tape and place over that so that my die is positioned exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and take my cutting mat or cutting plate, my top plate, blah, 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 <laughs> and put it in my little sandwich here. Run it through, I can feel when it cuts, and I'm gonna back it back through, okay? So I've almost got like two passes on it that way. And as you can see, it didn't cut all the way through the bottom there, all right? So I'm gonna peel this part off take out the piece that it did cut off here, and then I'm gonna reposition this again on here, maybe. And then you can sort of feel it because there's those, uh, this is another reason I like using these dies, because of the stitch die element, I can line that up with the same placement that it was in before, because the grooves will find the little indentations of the stitch, so it sort of um, finds its own spot there for me. Run it through a second time, Peel that off. And now we've got it. We've got just a little tiny bit here that's still attached and it's where those two pieces were glued together, which is kind of what I expected. And so I'm just gonna come in here with my scissors and it's so lightly attached. It's just by like a few little threads. I'm just gonna kind of come along there. I'm almost, I'm almost not even squeezing my scissors. I'm almost just running my scissors, my blade in that little groove there and it releases on its own. And so now we've got our little notch cut out of the top of our um, envelope. So I'm gonna do that for the other in the same way, but this time I'm also gonna use this piece here as sort of a way to check and reference it. So placing this on my cutting mat, I'm gonna come down three quarters of an inch, find my center here come down three quarters of an inch, make my little mark where my center is, position my die so that the two little side marks that I made are flush with the top of my pocket and my little um, center mark here, is that right? Yeah, my little center mark is lined up. I'm gonna take my tape and just lay over this so that's gonna hold that into place right where I want it to be. And now I'm just gonna kind of hold this up. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for where the cut line of my of my die meets it. So you can see that that this line here is the cut line, and that's lining up right with the edge of the paper where that is. So that looks good. I like it. Let's go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine as well. Peel our tape off there. And I just keep reusing the tape until I, I sort of can't reuse it again anymore. <laughs> You'll get to a point where you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't think the tape is liking me so much anymore. I can't really reuse it again. I'm gonna just sort of find these grooves again, which again, it's so easy because it's like, it's locked in. I can't even wiggle it if I wanted it to um, from the indentation that it makes from the stitches from the die. So that's kind of a another reason if you know you need to make a couple of passes with something, grab a stitch die. It's really easy to do that because it's always going to line up with the same placement that you had it in there before. And so now we're going to check them, hold them up, see how they're perfectly lined up. It just works out. Let me go ahead and get the other two cut and I'll be right back. When the autumn leaves are playing, chasing, puts a smile up on my face. They leave their branches one by one. And now 
now that we've got all of our pieces cut and they line up perfectly, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. The next step is gonna be to turn them over and on the back side here, we're gonna make a mark three quarters of an inch in from each side. So on the back side, which is the side where it's seamed, we're just gonna lay our ruler down and come over three quarters of an inch on that side. And we're gonna come over three quarters of an inch on this side. And that those marks are gonna be to let us know where we need to glue um, to attach them and still be able to maintain that that movement and that expansion capability of the accordion part. And now that we've got all of our pieces marked here, we're gonna put glue in the center section between those two lines that we just drew on each piece. So we're gonna come along right on, like, you know, just to the inside of those lines towards the center section. And they come just to the inside of that circle that we just cut out there in the center section. And then, um, you know, obviously along the bottom too. And then we're just gonna fill it in with glue, trying to cover as much as possible, but using just a thin bead of glue all along this whole area right in here. And I really do think, usually I'm like, hey, if you wanna use a different type of adhesive, go for it. I, I really think that in this, you need, you need to use some sort of liquid adhesive because there is a lot of, um, there's there's just a lot of pressure that's placed on that. And you're gonna stand them up and I'm gluing it the you know the back side to the right the front side of the next one. And I'm just gonna stack them up in this way, giving it a nice firm burnishing, making sure I've got really good contact. I am making sure that if there is glue seeping out that it's not gonna get in the way here of the ability for these to open up. I don't want to pull on it too much right now because that glue hasn't set all the way. But I want to make sure I've really burnished that down all along there. Go ahead and put glue on the back side of this one then that we just attached down. Come into the inside of those pencil marks that we made, the inside of that circle that we just cut, and the inside of the bottom, just right along that edge, and then fill it in with glue. Just like that. And I'm standing it up so I've got the glue side, which is the back side, and I'm gonna attach it to the front side of the next piece. I'm gonna stand them up next to each other. I'm using my fingers to line them up on each side, and it's standing up on the bottom, so it's lined up on the bottom. Once I get that together, give it a nice firm burnishing being careful not to let them slip around in any way. I'm using this hand to hold it in place while I'm burnishing around. Turn it over, give it a burnishing from the back side. Double check to make sure that if I did have glue come out, it's not keeping that from opening. It's not, I don't even have glue coming out, which is amazing for me. <laughs> and then again, on the back side here, between the lines, I'm gonna add the glue. Once again, standing it up, so I've got the back side with the glue on on this side. I've got the front side here. I'm gonna attach it to the back side with the glue. Standing it up, making sure I'm straight. Burnishing it down. Okay, you guys, I just realized something. I should have placed my top piece underneath this piece of pattern paper, and I didn't. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to lift that up, but we'll see, I just realized that. See, I can't make it through without making a mistake myself, so. <laughs> we may have a little lesson in, in what happens when Caroline has to take something apart. I don't think it would be one of my videos without that, would it? <laughs> all right, so now we've got these all attached and that looks great. I'm gonna set these aside, let them dry, um, kind of let them set. I'm gonna kind of pick at this and see if it is gonna lift up at all. If it won't, we're just gonna adapt and change it. Um, but please note, when you're making it, the easiest thing to do would be to put that little kind of a folded, accordion folded piece over there first, but we didn't do that, so that's okay. 
and that's this piece here that's two and a half inches uh, tall by four inches wide and it's going to be placed in our scoreboard here and we're going to score it at two inches okay that's going to be the piece that we're that's the flap we're going to attach which is two inches okay or it's a half an inch but i'm scoring it at two inches here and then we're also going to score this at one and a quarter inches so you're going to score it at one and a quarter and two inches and then you're going to score it every one eighth of an inch mark between the one and a quarter and the two inch mark okay and I'm just gonna fold and burnish all these score marks to sort of loosen that up. And because it's hard to fold on these eighth of an inch score marks, I'm doing my first set of folding and burnishing every quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna come back through here and to get those eighth of an inch folds, I'm just gonna sort of pinch them together and fold it right along that score mark there. Just working my fingers kind of down the line and letting that, that pinch sort of start that fold and then I'll go over it with my bone folder and give it a nice firm burnishing. So I'm just going between each of those quarter inch folds that I just made, and I'm just gonna give it a little pinch, and you can sort of see it, it, it folds right along that score mark, but it seems to be easier to do it if you just kind of work that down the line like that. Again, I'm trying to make sure that my sides are lined up as I'm going along, and we'll get this last one here. I'm just gonna pinch it together. Well, maybe. There we go, we're just gonna pinch it together. And I'm just gently kind of coming along that row, pinching it. And then once I've got it sort of started to fold, I'm making sure that my top and bottom are lined up before I come along with my bone folder and give it that firm burnishing. So this is the piece that's gonna attach to the top there, okay? And one of the things that I did on that one is I did round those corners. So let me get my corner rounder. And that's going to be on the larger section here, on this one and a quarter inch section. This is the top flap, okay? This is the flap that's going to come around to the front. This half inch section is going to be the part that it gets glued down, that you will glue down on the inside of the folio like this. You're going to center it on there and glue it down there like that. I didn't do that. I'm going to see if I can try to lift this paper up, but if I can't, we're going to find a different way to do this. So I'm just taking a pokey tool and I'm running right along that edge of where I glued down that pattern paper. If this weren't Cartabella paper, I probably wouldn't try it at this point. I have done this before with other paper when I've glued it down, but only like soon after I glued it down. This is a thicker paper, so I feel like I'm gonna be able to sort of get underneath here. But if at any point I have some troubles, I'm just going to slip some glue under it and we're going to go a different direction with it. But I think I'm going to be able to get it up. So as you can see, I'm just working that back and forth, trying not to rip the other paper. I'm going to see if that's wide enough. It is not. Try to get it in here. Well, I, th I wasn't trying to make this a lesson in how to take something apart and perform some surgery, but here it is. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. Let's miter these to make it a little easier to slip in. So coming from that half inch score mark, or in this case it was the two inch score mark, but it's that half inch section, I'm gonna just put my scissors right at that mark and angle it in just to give myself a little miter. Try to ease that in here. Uh, this is frustrating. I need to come more over on this side and it's really stuck over here. I had a lot of glue over here. I'm just trying to be really careful. The last thing I want to do is rip the paper. And I'm starting to rip it a little bit over here, so I'm getting a little nervous. Okay, let's see. I think if I give this a little deeper miter, I might be good to go.
Let's try that. Okay, and the fold needs to come around to the back. So you're gonna, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think it's gonna go this way, but it's not. It's gonna go around to the back. I'll try to slip this in. Just dry fitting it right now to make sure it'll fit. Looks like I got a little bit more to loosen up in here. Oh, this is scary. There we go. There we go. That worked out. Okay, so I'm kind of, I'm just dry fitting it right now. I'm seeing how this is going to work. I want to center it on here. Once I get it where I want it to be, because I, and only because I've done this, only because I messed this up, <laughs> am I doing it this way. You would just put the glue on the backside and then slide it in. But because I am, because I messed this up, I'm kind of slipping my glue bottle in there making sure I'm still lined up, making sure I'm still centered. And I'm gluing it from this side first, and then I'm gonna have to go and slip some glue underneath the back side of that pattern paper too. But it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be just fine. And I spoke too soon talking about how, oh, I don't make mistakes anymore. I made the mistakes and learned all the stuff. <laughs> Clearly. That is not the case. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I this, these little glue bottles with these kind of needle tips on them are really great because you can just slip it in here and do that. I'm probably gonna end up with a lot sliding out too because I, yeah, maybe use too much. That's okay. Just kind of press that down, cleaning it up as I go. There. I could have put it down from the inside back here, like right here at the top, but I feel like it's just a little bit more secure coming over the edge from the back side there. And um, I feel like it's a slightly better finish. Although if I had ripped the paper, it wouldn't have been, but <laughs> fortunately I didn't rip the paper. Sorry for the little detour there, guys. All right. Um, good news is, is our glue is fully set here on our accordion little system here. And as you can see, by only gluing it, you know, three quarters of an inch from the sides, we have a lot of give in this little pocket system and this little file system here. So it's really cool that it opens up like that. Now I need to make sure that I don't make the same mistake. <laughs> I wanted this time, I want to put my pattern paper down on the outside before I glue this down on top of it. Okay, so we're gonna get that other piece of pattern paper that we cut to 12 inches wide by five and seven eighths of an inch tall. And I'm, I don't know that there's a top or a bottom to this, um, but I'm just gonna say that's the top. That, it looks, that looks like a good top to me. And we already know, because we cut from the other side, that I need to cut three and three-eighths of an inch from either edge, and that's going to be my side pieces. I know that I need to cut three-eighths of an inch wide pieces here for my gussets, and then the piece that I'm left over with here in the middle is going to be sized just perfectly to fit in that little space there in that center section. So let's go ahead and cut these pieces. Um, I'm going to talk you through it again one more time. So kind of come over here to the three and three eighths of an inch mark. I'm cutting from the left side first. It's going to go over there. Okay. And now to cut this piece over here, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take it to the three and three eighths of an inch mark and give it a little cut. Flip it back over. That's going to be my piece over here. And then from my center piece, I'm looking at this edge here and I'm gonna count down, I'm gonna count down one, two, three eighths of an inch and give that a little slice and that's gonna be for the gusset on the right side. Flip it over, place it back in and then I'm gonna count one, two, three eighths of an inch over from the other side, give it a slice, put that one down and now we've got our center piece here that is gonna sit right in between here um, in this four and a half inch section here, okay? And it looks like I might need to trim this just ever so slightly. Um, you know, who knows, I might've been off on one of those cuts there. And if you have to do that, I'm just, I'm gonna take a little bit off of each side. So I'm gonna take a little sliver off of that side, and I'm gonna take a little sliver off of this side so that it's even. And there we have it. Now that's gonna fit right in there. 
Okay, so now we've got our, all of our pieces cut. I'm gonna go ahead and ink my edges, but I'm not gonna glue them all down yet because I've got all sorts of things I need to put down before I put down the pattern paper here. So let me go ahead and ink my edges. And now I can go ahead and glue down my gussets. I know I can glue those two pieces down, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down. Since I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were on in wild I'm going to go ahead and put down this center piece. I am going to use a ribbon to attach to tie this closed, but I'm going to attach it underneath here and it's gonna come up. So it doesn't necessarily need to go underneath the pattern paper here. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my middle piece. Going all the way until November. Turn the world around us into gold. Doesn't that look great? I love the way the patterns just match as it sort of flows across there. I, I don't know. I geek out about that. I think that's great. And now for these side pieces, I can't remember which one I want to glue down now and which one I want to put a magnet under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these aside in the same place that I want them to kind of go on, turn this back over. And just for a reference, I know I want, that goes back like that. I know I want this to close like this and this to close over like that. Okay. So I'm going to need to attach a magnet underneath this side over here and not on this side. So for this one, I'm gonna be able to put my pattern paper on. So I'm gonna open it back up, turn it back over, and this one here on the right, I'm gonna be able to go ahead and glue my paper down. Do you see what I just did there? So let's look at this again. We had the paper laid out here like this. I'm gonna take them to the sides, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it over and close it up the way I want it closed up. I know that this piece that comes over the top, I don't need a magnet on that because I'm gonna actually have an overhang here with a, um, like a cut apart or something that the magnet's gonna be attached to, to to connect over here. And I am free to put the pattern paper on here. So I'm gonna grab a hold of the side I can put the pattern paper on, flip it back over, and I know I can put my pattern paper on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue that one down. When the autumn leaves are playing, chasing, puts a smile up on my face. They leave their branches one by one and whirl around there just for fun. And I'm gonna keep this one off to the side. I don't need to do anything with that one just yet, okay? And so now let's go ahead and take our, um, our little accordion file little accordion pockets file here. And on the back side, I'm gonna cut a piece of ribbon. On the other one, I had it 10 inches long and I feel like it's a little bit too short. So I'm gonna cut this at 12 inches this time. And you know, if it's a little long, I can always trim it down. I'd rather trim it down than have it be too short. So I'm gonna cut a 12 inch length of ribbon. And I want the pretty side because I this isn't double face satin. I would prefer double face satin. If you have double face satin, do that. My suggestion is just always buy double face satin because then you never have to worry about this. <laughs> but um, I didn't on this one. So I want the pretty side to come up like this. Okay, I want the shiny side to be up there like that. So I want this little tail end to flip around. So I'm gonna take the, the matte side and wrap this around to the back like this. And then I'm just gonna take a piece of double-sided tape. I'm gonna use the one inch tape just because that's what I've got. Um, lay this down here on the center and then I'm just going to take that tape right across the bottom there just to attach it down let's get something to stick to I'm trying to be careful not to come past my line which I did just slightly so if that happens kind of rub that back so my adhesive is it I still don't want adhesive to go past those lines there okay Go ahead and burnish that down, peel off the backing to the tape, and now we can apply our glue in the same way we did on all of our other little pockets when we attached it down, where we're putting the glue to the inside of that pencil mark all the way around and filling in. 
And I just really want to make sure that this sticks down well. So again, I'm not, it's, it doesn't stick any better if you use a lot of glue, but it does stick better if you have an even application of the glue. If as much, I'm trying to get as much surface area as possible to be in contact with glue. A big glop of glue isn't going to stick as well as a whole, you know, like the same amount of glue spread out over a larger area. I hope that makes sense. And then this one is going to be centered left and right. I'm coming down to that edge of the um, of the pattern paper, centering it left and right there. I'm going to kind of fold this over, double check. Looks like I need to scooch it just a little bit to the left because I also want to center it to this. And so see how I'm lining up these sides here with this top flap? And I've got my bottom is nice and lined up there and then I'm just going to give it a nice firm burnishing all along okay just like that perfect okay so now let's um hmm I feel like I want to address this before we go too much further so now let's go ahead and flip it back on over let's close it up in the way that we want it closed up which is going to be like this okay and let me find a cut apart that I can use for the um, for the closure here. All right, so I took a three by four cut apart. So I trimmed off an eighth of an inch, you know, on the length and the width. And then I cut a piece of uh, scrap cardstock to three by four. So that's going to create this nice little matting around there. And we're going to use that as our decorative element, but also to house the magnets for our closure. I've decided that I want to do uh, two sets of magnets on here just so that I've got two points of contact because it is a folio and because it could twist a little bit. That's just going to give me two points of contact. It's going to make sure that it's staying very much um, exactly where I want it to stay <laughs> and that's what I want it to do. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the piece that's the matting to sort of lay this out on here and I'm going to find Let's see, let's go ahead and open this up because what I want to do is I want to center this about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fold and I want to center it top and bottom. So I'm just going to kind of take my centering ruler, I'm placing an eighth of an inch on the edge here. I'm going to come over here to the three inch mark because this is six inches tall. And then I'm going to take this one and it's uh, Let's see, two inches and two inches. So that's about where it needs to be, okay? And I'm just gonna make a little mark with my pencil so that I know about where the edge of that's gonna fall, okay? And now that I've got that little mark in place, I can go ahead and just place my magnets. It doesn't really matter so much. You know, I just, I just needed a reference on where they were gonna go. So I wanna come about a half an inch in from the edge and I wanna come um, about a half an inch in from each of my, my little marks here. And in fact, I think I think I might wanna come like three eighths of an inch from the edge, but let me make sure I've got room to do that because there's not a lot of overhang on this. So the second little um, reference mark that I wanna make is I'm opening this up so that my gussets are standing up straight on each side. And that's where I want it to be just like that and then I'm just going to take my pencil not quite like that there we go and I'm just going to make a little line here along that edge so I kind of know where that where that fold is and now I'm going to be able to place my magnets in a way that makes sure that they're going to have contact when the when those meet but they're not going to be underneath the um the part of that flap that folds over so that I've got exposure there. Oh my goodness, words are hard for me today. I don't know why. I'm sorry, I hope this makes sense to you. <laughs> I'm gonna stick the magnets down about there. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if the tape comes beyond that line. Um, that line is just for reference for me on where they kind of need to be placed. So I'm gonna take my tape, just stick them down right there. And, um, you know, I've had people say, oh, I can see your magnets. I don't want to see. Okay, if you don't want to see the magnets, I get it. That's totally fine. I don't mind seeing the magnets. 
they are a functionality of all this stuff. Every other closure you have, you see. And if I take my bone folder and I kind of run it around the paper around that magnet, it helps that magnet to really be exposed and it helps it to catch better. I don't wanna hide the magnet. I don't want to put tape over it and make it smooth it out so that the magnet is, you know, sort of floating between the two pieces of paper. I want the magnet to connect. So for me, it's what I do. If you don't like it and you think it's really ugly, I get it. It's totally fine. That's, that's great. You do you. This is how I like to do it. And I don't mind seeing the, the mechanism of it, I guess is what I would say. Okay. So now that I've got those magnets on here, I can go ahead and put this other piece of pattern paper down. While I'm still thinking about it, I'm making sure that my pattern is lining up. I can see my stem is there and that's correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the backing off of my tape. And then I'm gonna put some glue on my pattern paper here and stick it down. Okay. And I really, again, for me, you don't have to do this, but for me, I like to really burnish around those magnets because um, I want them to stick up. <laughs> I want them to make contact with the corresponding magnet on the other side so that I have an actual working, you know, closure. So, and I know, I know there's other ways to do that. I know there's ways, and I've even tried this myself. I've used them, I have them in my stash where you use the small little metal washers or there's other little metal bits that you can put down there. And that's awesome. I just, it doesn't bother me to see the magnet. So I've decided I'm, I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. Okay, so my magnets are down and I can see the edge of where the magnet is there because I want them to be flush all the way so that they can stick, okay? All right, so now let's flip it back over. This is gonna close like that and close like that. I need to um, place, I need to uh, have magnets on the back of this one that are then gonna be encased by this piece here, okay? So how I really wanna do that is I wanna take this piece here and I wanna line it up exactly where I want it to be and I'm gonna take my corresponding magnets, I'm gonna let them kind of find their little their little spot here. And look how cool this is. I can move the paper and the magnets don't move. So I can position this exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna get my folio opened up into the position I want it to be in and I'm actually gonna put a clamp on it. And what I mean by the position I want it to be in is I want these corners to be at 90 degree angles. I don't want them to be, you know, splayed out or in. I want them to be straight at a 90 degree angle there. And once I've got them where I want them to be, I'm just gonna put a clamp on there and double check. I think I want that to be pulled out a little bit more. About like that. That's good. Clamp that. Making sure that the bottom is in the same way here and it's not. And that's why we're doing two sets of magnets because that just happens. You know, we have two points of contact. It's gonna be much more squared up. Okay. So once I've got that where I want it to be, now I wanna position this in such a way that, that I've got plenty of room around the magnet to attach um, my, uh, my paper. Because if the magnet's too close to the edge, the paper's not gonna to wanna to come down on itself. And I think that's about right. That looks good to me. And so now I'm gonna take my tape and I am gonna go over the magnets where they are. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't wanna move anything out of placement right now. I'm just like this. Put some tape on that just so it's where I want it to be, okay? And now I can go ahead and pick this up and really burnish that tape down so that that magnet isn't gonna move. I'm gonna double check that it's where I want it to be. Easy to do, it just drops it right on there. That looks good, I like it. 
And now, just got an extra piece of tape, I'll just stick it down there. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go ahead and peel the backing off of my tape. I've inked the edges on my cut apart. I'm simply gonna place some glue on the back side of my cut apart here. Center it on my matting piece. Kind of lift off any glue that seeps out. And then this is where, this is also why I like to kind of um, go around my, my, um, magnets if i start kind of going around them here they're going to stand up on the front side but if i bend it if i go to the back if i flip it over to the back side and i start burnishing it down from the back side and i start burnishing it down where i'm kind of sculpting around those magnets from the back side then they're not going to be as easily seen on the front because the protrusion is going to come out of the back and for me, I just think it's a nicer finish. So I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm absolutely accentuating this magnet. Yes, you can see my magnets. They are in there. And um, and I don't think they necessarily look bad when you can see them through the paper. If you ex if you accentuate them like this, they, they're kind of like a nice geometric circle, you know? <laughs> they're, they're evenly placed. It's not bad stuff, right? But because I'm doing this from the back side, um, the front side is should be fairly flush, if that makes sense. There we go. And then from the front side, yeah, you can sort of see them, but not as prominently as you can from the back side. And it's okay, it doesn't bother me. Once it gets on there, I think it looks just fine. If you really don't like it, you can always go over it with some other little embellishments or something like that. It is going to be fine. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of let it find itself here. I wanna make a little tick mark on the on this paper here where that um, where the edge is. Okay, erase it from the front. I've marked it around to the back. Okay, and so now I'm gonna take my glue and I'm just gonna to go to the inside of where I made that tick mark to make sure that I'm not gonna go over the edge of the front of my um, my folio piece. Cover this with glue. Pack that off some, okay. And then I've still got my clamps in place so I know it's still right where I want it to be. I'm just gonna let the magnets find themselves, let them fall into place. Once everything's where I want it to be, I just sort of gently rub it. Go ahead and take off my clamps. And then I can burnish this all the way down. Okay. Just give it a nice firm burnishing, really making sure it's connected. Okay, there we go. And now it's just gonna just work perfectly. Isn't that great? I love it. I think it looks really great. And we're going to do some other embellishments on here. It's going to be fine. And like I said, if seeing any part of this magnet bothers me from the front side, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll cover it with like a little leaf cut out or something, or I'll do something else, but it, it, it doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, I, I get it. You're allowed. Okay. <laughs> but I'm also allowed to not be bothered by it. So <laughs> that's kind of where I am right now with it. So um, now, now, our folio is essentially finished. All of the mechanics of our folio are in place. We have our accordion pocket here on the inside. We have our pocket that um, is just glued down over here on this side. We have our pocket that was made with the folds on this side. So it's gonna go from edge to edge. I can get all the way in here, edge to edge on this one. And on the back side, we have our little accordion you know, file pockets here that are gonna all open out just like that. Pretty cool, huh? So now all we need to do is make our, um, our tags and map them, which we've got our pieces cut out here for those, and any sort of um, embellishments that we wanna put in and decorate them with a the pattern paper. And I think I'm gonna do most of that off screen, but I am gonna show you how I make the tags here first of all. 
Now I have been using, and you guys have probably seen me do this before. I've been using this die a lot <laughs> for the tops of tags and inserts and things like that. What it's actually from is there is this stacked pocket die set and it's the matting piece that goes inside of these, you know, front facings for this pocket, for the stack pocket die. And I just think it's the most versatile die ever. <laughs> I use it for all sorts of things. What I want to be able to do is I want to cut a little kind of semicircle out of the top for a tag that looks like this. Okay, so all of these I used that die to make. Okay, and how I'm going to do that is really similar to how I've sort of cut the other stuff out with the dies, <laughs> which is to say I'm not using it the way I, the die was probably intended. Um, I'm going to find the center. I've marked the center on this die, which I can sort of faintly see, but I'm going to accentuate it so you guys can see it. I'm going to come along here. These are three and a half inches wide. Okay. So I'm going to come along here. I'm laying it on my mat. I'm lining that center mark of the die up with the center part of this um, of this matting piece. I'm going to take a piece of repositionable tape and put on here. And I'm looking to make sure that I've got an even reveal at the top on either side. It looks like I'm off by just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of slip it over there like that. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And then we're going to run that through our die cutter. And it's going to cut this really cute little semicircle out of the top of our tag. And I think it looks really great. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of them and I'll be right back. All right. I went ahead and ran my little tags through my die cutting machine using this little die so I could create that circle top, right? And then I also went ahead and cut my matting pieces and ran them through as well. And what I did was once I, once I established the first cut on any of them, then I stacked the next paper behind it. I placed the tag, you know, in that position on that one that I just cut, pulled it out. And that way I knew I was going to get perfect placement with all of them. And as you can see, they line up pretty closely. Actually, I think if I flip that one around, they'll line up all the way. Yep, they line up. So <laughs> um, I think that that worked out pretty well. And then the matting pieces are going to line up in the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down all of my matting pieces. I did go ahead and ink my edges as well. Some are faster, some are slow, and some are high, and some are low. Dancing through the last days of September. And now that I've got my matting pieces on all of my tags, I want to go ahead and add my grommets. Now this is completely optional. You don't need to do this. These would very easily um, come in and out of here just by you know grabbing a hold of this little this little pull tab here, this little round top. And you don't even need to do that part, but I like it. I think, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing to me and I like doing it. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, you may have seen me do this before, but I'm going to go ahead and run through it anyway. I'm going to use, I use a separate cutting mat here, one that's pretty messed up really, but um, it's going to work for our purposes here. And it's just going to, and I'm lining it up on here. I'm making sure I've got kind of an even reveal on either side. I'm trying to find a center point here on my tag. Once I've established where I want that center point to be, I'm going to take the uh, hole punch tool here and I'm going to place it on my center where I, where I want my hole to be punched and subsequently where the grommet is going to be. I'm going to give it a few wax and once I have that hole set, I'm going to use that as a template for all of my subsequent holes. So I'm lining it up with the next tag underneath. I'm going to give it a couple punches, understanding that it's not going to punch all the way through, but it's going to be enough for me to create like a groove for this to sit in. And so now I've got that little groove there. I can just sort of nestle my hole punch on top of that groove that I created, give it a whack. That's going to punch it through all the way, set that aside. I'm using the same uh, tag, my original tag as my template every time, just in case it gets off by a little bit on one of them, I'm going back to the original one. Give it a whack. It has created this little groove here. Actually cut out a little bit of the paper. <laughs> Give it another whack. Got my hole. And then the fourth one. 
same thing, lining them up, placing my punch in that hole that I created from the one on top. Give it a little tap. Oh, that one went all the way through. <laughs> that worked. And now that I've got all my holes punched, I'm gonna go ahead and get my little grommets out. And then it's really easy to put them together. You put the pretty side of the grommet on, this, on the pretty side of your tag, okay? And then it sits on top of the base of this of the setting base here. We're gonna take the little washer and it goes on top of this part that protrudes. It goes curved side up. You take your setting tool this time, this time instead of the hole punch. Now I've got the setting tool and I'm gonna give it about six or seven wax. And there you have it. I have a perfectly finished grommet, completely smooth on this side, unlike the ones that you use with the little tool, the crocodile. Oh, I hate that thing. I never could get it right, and it just was always rough, and I always felt like I was going to cut my finger or rip paper. Uh, anyway, never mind. <laughs> I digress. Can you tell I really don't like that thing? Um, but on these, they're just perfect and they're smooth and they're reinforced and I love the way they look. So I'm going to do that one more time here and then I'll fast forward through the rest of them. I'm going to place the pretty side of the grommet on the pretty side of the paper and then that goes in the little groove here of the base. The washer goes curved side up over that part of the grommet that sticks out. The setting tool sticks on top of that part of the grommet that sticks out, and I'm going to give it about six or seven wax with a 16 ounce hammer. And there you go. We've got it taken care of. Let me get the other ones done and I'll be right back. Now I use the smaller grommets for these tags, and I am going to use a larger grommet for the um, for this kind of attachment part that I'm gonna put my ribbon through here. And so on that one, I'm gonna use this grommet kit here. So I'm gonna put this one away, take this one out. So I've taken out a grommet and a washer in a corresponding color. I've got my setting tool, my punch, and my base. It's just slightly different size because it's a different size grommet. And we're gonna punch through on this one, but I need to go ahead and put my pattern paper down first. Now I've inked my edges, and these are three and seven eighths by one and an eighth of inch uh, tall. And so I've gone ahead and inked my edges. I'm gonna glue them down on here because I want them glued down before I punch my hole and attach my grommets. And once we have our pattern paper attached, we're just gonna do a very similar thing here where I'm gonna find the center here. This is four inches, so it's pretty simple here to find a center. Kind of line it up like that. And then I'm going to take my hole punch and I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch from the edge at the center point and I'm going to give it a few wax. And once I've gone ahead and cut through all of that with my punch, I'm going to put my grommet through on my pretty side on the outside part here that's going to fold over, right? That's going to then slip over my little setting tool here. So I've got the grommet on there, the hole goes over there, the grommet's coming up through. Then I'm gonna take my washer curved side up, place it over my setting tool, and then um, the corresponding setting tool on top, and then I'm gonna give it a few wax. And there you have it. We have a perfectly set grommet on here, and I think it looks great. Now I can go ahead and put all my tools away, and let's go ahead and put the pattern paper on this, um, on this piece here. Go ahead and put our matting paper down here. Erase my pencil mark. <laughs> and I cut this in the exact same way. I took that circle punch, that same circle punch, and I lined it up on there, ran it through my die cutting machine, inked my edges, and now I'm just gonna glue it down. I'm just centering it on there and gluing it down. I'm gonna give it a nice burnishing, cleaning up any glue that may seep out. There we go. And now for our tag inserts, I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of, of ribbon. I'm cutting them to six inches in length. I'm trimming them down quite a bit more than that. Honestly, actually, let's try cutting them at four inches in length because I, I do feel like the six inches is a little bit of overkill. Make sure I get the right shade of red here. And I'm just using this little like quarter of an inch or I don't know three-eighths of an inch, I don't know, is it a quarter of an inch? Eighth of an inch, I'm using this little eighth of an inch wide ribbon here. So let's do these at four inches. So 
come over here to the 16. All right, I've got four lengths of four inch long uh, ribbon here, and I'm gonna loop them in half, just like this. Take the loop end, and whichever end is your pretty side is the end is the side you wanna start the loop from. So I'm coming from the pretty side through to the back, bring it around to the front, and I'm just gonna take my little tails through that loop that I just made, that I just pushed through, and pull them on tight, okay? Now, I'm not gonna keep them too tight, I'm gonna slightly loose. I'm gonna slide them to the side here of the top of my little round. I'm gonna put a little dab of glue right there. When I bring this back around, I'm gonna take a little dab of glue underneath that little loop that I made. And then I'm just gonna pull it tight, and that's gonna get all that glue in contact where I want it to be. And I'll take a little clamp and stick on top of it just long enough for me to do the next one. I'm gonna take the next one, loop it, fish it through from the pretty side so that the loop ends up coming around to the pretty side. Not that the other side isn't pretty, but you know what I mean. Kind of lightly pull the loop through, slide it to the side, put a little dab of glue there, bring it back, take a little dab of glue underneath where that loop is gonna come Pull it tight, just like that. Once that has made contact, then I'm gonna take the clamp off the other one and slip it on this one. Same thing, make my little loop. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two in the same way. And when the, once those are all in place, I'm gonna go ahead and trim my little tails on my ribbon. And then y'all know that I use a lighter to seal my ends, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can simply use some fray check or you can really honestly just go over it with a little dab of the glue and that will keep it in place. Um, I just feel like I just, I don't have a lot of patience for that to dry. So I use the lighter <laughs> and then it just, sort of singes it back and I've shown this before but I'm just going to mention again I'm not touching the flame to the ribbon I'm just getting the flame close enough to the ribbon that the heat from the flame is causing that to sort of melt if that makes sense and it just sears that edge and seals it up so that it won't fray um, as it's being used okay so now that these are all done they're simply going to slip into their little respective slots here um, we've got four slots and room for four tags and these don't have to be you know tags this because I was making this folio you know just kind of more for a practice more than anything else um, this this opening here is four inches and so if I had four by six photos it might be kind of tight if I had to do it over again I might make the opening four and a quarter inches just wide enough and you could slip photos in there you could just keep it with the tags like it is you could do a whole bunch of different stuff in here you could have little bits of like maybe movie tickets or theater tickets or something like that whatever memorabilia you want to keep and you want to scrap in that way um, but they're just really great for stuff like that or you could make a larger version of this and, you know, I'm sure you've all seen them at Walmart and other places that there are these accordion, you know, pockets. There's coupon books that are this way. There's, you know, all sorts of things that you can make in that way. And now that you know how to make them, you can make them any way you want. So, um, so that's that. Now let's go ahead and cut a length of ribbon here to put through this loop. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that to 12 inches as well. And we're going to do something a little bit different on the, one of the ends. We're going to sort of fold it over and glue it down. Words are hard for me today. I don't know why. <laughs> so I want to fold this over about a quarter of an inch over. So I'm just, I don't know, quarter to three eighths of an inch over. And then I'm just going to finger press it. Or in this case, I'm actually using a bone folder to sort of press it down to give me a nice little crease and put some glue on the underneath side of that. 
and then we're gonna just fold it over on itself and take a clamp and put down on that and just let that sit for a minute until it sort of sets into place. While that's setting there, let's go ahead and put some pattern paper on the inside here on our pockets. I've gone ahead and cut my pieces and they are cut to, this one here is two and three eighths wide by five and seven eighths tall. And this one here is one and seven eighths inches wide by five and seven eighths inches tall. And this one here is four and an eighth wide by four and three eighths of an inch tall. And it's gonna sit like this. And I went ahead and cut my notches out and inked my edges. And so now I'm just gonna glue those down. All right, so now we've gone ahead and covered our um, pockets here on the inside. Let's go ahead and close this back up and come back over here to the back. I think our glue is set enough to sort of work with this. So this piece here is actually going to glue down on the inside here. And so I'm gonna take it so that the pretty side is facing down and the end opposite the end that we just glued, we're gonna feed it through that um, grommet there, okay? And then we're gonna come up to this edge and we're gonna glue this down on this edge and then we'll pull it tight, but I wanna glue it down there first. So that edge that we just folded over and glued, we're gonna put some more glue on that edge, on that side we just folded down, okay? Kind of pull this in a little bit. And it's gonna line up just with that edge right there. And I'm gonna take a clamp because this is not gonna stick without that. When I get it set right where I want it to be, I'm gonna take a clamp and put on that and then we're gonna let that dry just like that before I pull it tight again. While I'm, while I'm letting that dry, I'm searching through some of my little ephemera pack that came with my Club EP box this month. And um, because you know there's only one piece, piece of each in here, <laughs> so I can't use the exact same ephemera that I had used for my prototype one, but I'm trying to find some that are somewhat comparable, right? And, um, I think that's still set in there. If I look at my prototype over here, let's kind of bring this back into view. I had created a little pocket here on the front with my ephemera, which is just, I think, really cute. And this is similar in size. It's a little bit smaller. Um, and I, I feel like it's a little bit too dark. And I love this saying, this I love fall most of all. So I think what I'm going to do is actually take this out. And we're gonna layer that on top of here. Obviously, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit with my trimmer because you've got all these little things hanging off and the printing kind of went off on a different spot there. But I think that that's gonna look really cute. So I'll layer that up on top of there and I am gonna mat it with some cardstock in the same way that I did this one. And for over here, I don't have a pretty little, you know, flower arrangement and my little mason jar like I've got there. But I've got this one that says fall is made with pumpkin spice and everything nice. And I think I can do that one up there. And then this one over here is just really cute. It says, hello fall. It's good to see you. And my goodness, I feel that deeply right now. So <laughs> I'm just so ready for it not to be hot anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these pieces ready to put in place for our little tech spots and pockets. All right, so our ribbon has set and that's really on there and it's it's not gonna go anywhere and I like the way that that looks. And it's gonna give us a nice little pull down here. It's gonna be adjustable for whatever size we need it to be. And so that's working really well. Let's go ahead and tie our bow. Um, you could put something decorative on this back here, but I just, I feel like the bow is enough. There's, there's kind of a lot going on back here. So how I tie my bows is I do the, the rabbit ears. I do two loops. And the reason being is that my bows are always gonna end up laying straight with the line of the, um, of, of the ribbon. So if I were to tie it like that, it's gonna be straight that way. In this case, since the ribbon is going up and down and I'm wanting this to go side to side, I'm actually gonna do the, you know, around the tree <laughs> loop. So, you know, where you take the one loop and then you take the other one and wrap it around. And that's gonna mean that the bow is gonna line up perpendicular to the ribbon in the kind of the, the way that it lays. So when you see me tie my bows, almost always I do the double loops, um, but that's usually because I want the bow to lay in the same direction as the ribbon. 
but if you want the bow to lay the opposite direction of the ribbon, that's when you do the, you know, chase the rabbit around the tree thing. <laughs> or whatever the analogy is, I'm not sure. And I always wait to trim my ends until I've tied my bow so that I'm certain that it's, you know, the length that I want it to be. And that way I know when I retie it, it will always be the length that I need it to be as well. So I'm glad I went with the 12 inch long ribbon on these. I think that that's the right amount. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take my lighter to my ends again. And the back side of our folio is complete and I think it looks super cute. I really like the way it turned out. And so now let's go ahead and open up the inside and finish working on this part here. So um, I, you guys, I started making, I started cutting out all of these and inking the edges, like I said I was going to, and then somewhere I misplaced the piece that was supposed to go on here. And I have searched and searched and searched and I, I can't find it, I don't know, it, it went somewhere. So I got this little piece of the chipboard and um, I think that that looks really cute. And so I'm gonna do that. And instead of making a tag for the inside, I just cut this out of one of the three by four cut aparts. It says fall is my season. And I think that that'll look really cute. We'll go ahead and stick that in there. And then over here, I'm gonna stick this one down as a little tech spot on top of the pocket that I've got over here. I'm gonna put this as a tech spot over here on this one. And then I'm gonna glue some matting pieces on some little card inserts that I made to go in this pocket and I'll be right back. I wanted to show you how I'm gluing this down and I'm, I'm creating a straight line. So when you have something like this that I wanna glue down and make a tuck spot or make pockets, I'm taking the glue to the edge of this decorative kind of curved edge just so that that stays in place. But I'm establishing sort of a straight line for the purposes of the opening. And um, so I just kind of wanted to show you how I was doing that. And then that is just going to simply be placed right down here. And instead of centering it top to bottom, I think I'm going to kind of go like lower third. I feel like that looks kind of nice. And especially because I'm going to have something sticking out at the top of it. I think that that works. So we'll simply burnish that down. Get a little more glue here to clean up. And then our little tag is just gonna sit right in there. I'm gonna let that glue dry a little bit before I stick that in. And then on the same thing on these little tech spots here. So I know I'm gonna glue down these sides here. So I'm gonna establish a straight line at the top and then I'll fill in the rest of this sort of decorative portion. This side here, I don't necessarily have to do that, although I'm gonna kinda of come in some just to give it some more stability, just like that. And then we're just gonna find a spot to stick it down over here, just like that. Burnish it and clean up any glue that might seep out, whoops. See, sometimes you gotta let it set for a little bit before you start burnishing it because it'll start slipping around on you. There we go. This glue dries fast, but you still do have some room to play with it a little bit. You can kind of move it around some here and there. Okay, and then for this piece over here, I wanna just be careful that I've got the words kind of straight across here. So I'm making a visual note here that I need to go these one, two, three little loops there. And go ahead and put the glue on there. And then I'm gonna come straight over for these bottom three here. just like that. Okay, and this is gonna get stuck down over here. And these are sticking over slightly over the edge of the, you know, of where the pocket is. And that's okay, it's a tuck spot on top of a pocket. It's totally fine. And so now let's go ahead and glue down our pattern paper on these cards. I'm wondering, do I want the yellow? I think I do. I think that's gonna look a little bit better. And there we have it, folks. We have completed our little pocket folio and we've got tuck spots here and here and even in here, or really that's just another little pocket. I've got a lot of room in this little accordion pocket here. There's lots of room to put even more stuff in here. We've got a couple little card inserts that we made to put in there for now, right? And then this just closes up like this, the magnet catches. I really like the way that that works. I think that's great, it's very smooth on the front. And then on the back side, we've got room for this very deep expanding accordion file folder sort of pocket back here 
with lots and lots of room. I mean, you guys look, look how far that's gonna pull out like that. That's a lot of room. And then this just ties closed. And remember that little tip I gave you, if you want the loops to go in the same direction as your ribbon strings, you know, as, as the, the sort of the, these parts here, you wanna go the same direction as the ribbon, then you tie the bunny ears. And if you want it to go the opposite direction, which is what I'm wanting to do right now, then you do the around kind of loop around tie and then it will lay in that opposite direction there. Oops. Yeah, get double get double satin ribbon. <laughs> I've been fighting the wrong side of the satin on this ribbon, so eh, it's fine. Anyway, I'm really happy with the way it turned out and I hope you guys like it too and I hope you'll give it a try. And you don't have to make it in the same way that I made this particular one. The whole purpose of this, like I said at the beginning, was that we were establishing this almost like a sampler. And so, you know, there's little bits in here. Maybe you just want to do the accordion file pockets here and you want to do a larger version in some other way. Do that. Um, maybe you just want to do, you know, one of the other pockets that we've got on the inside here and you can do that and adapt it for your purposes as well. I just thought it would be kind of fun to go ahead and put this together in a single tutorial with a multiple of different pocket options so that you'd have a reference to play from when you want to make it your own, right? <laughs> All right. Well, that's what I have for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Just for fun. Some are faster, some are slow, and some are high, and some are low. Dancing through the last days of September. When the autumn leaves are playing chases, puts a smile upon my face. They leave the branches one by one. September